be looking at seven different shampoos most specifically for natural hair gelies also going to be looking at examples of this shampoo and i'll also be pointing out the ingredients in this shampoo that makes it what it is for your hair i found peace in your violence can't tell me there's no point in hi guys hi beautiful people welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new here my name is akune kamsi and i'm a content creator based in abuja and if you're not new here you're very much welcome back to the channel so today's video is all about shampoos which one you need for your natural hair and when you should use this shampoo there are different type of shampoos out there in the market knowing the type of shampoo to buy is very very important shampoos are meant to clean the root of your hair and your scalp while conditioners are meant to condition the ends of your hair picking the right shampoo is very very important since shampoos basically target the roots of your hair and your scalp shampoo can help to stimulate hair growth so if that's what you're looking for in this video please don't forget to give me a thumbs up please subscribe and let's get right into the video there are factors to consider when picking out the right shampoo for your hair now these factors are your hair type your scalp type your lifestyle and environment and your hair porosity so under your scalp type you have dry scalp you have oily scalp you have combination scalp and even have sensitive scalp now for hair type you have fine hair you have thick hair you have straight hair you have wavy hair you have coily hair you have damaged hair and you have other specific needs for your hair like dandruff you know a lot of things for environment and lifestyle what kind of work do you do are you someone that uh, maybe you swim a lot you're always entering the pool so you have like mineral build up on your hair or are you someone that work in a factory where you have a lot of things falling on your hair so your environment your lifestyle also affect the kind of shampoo your hair will be needed for hair porosity the medium hair porosity you have low hair porosity and you have the high hair porosity these are factors that play a role when picking the right shampoo for you but in this video we're going to be talking about the most popular and the common shampoos for natural hair these shampoos are moisturizing shampoo hydrating shampoo clarifying shampoo detoxifying shampoo chelating shampoo strengthening shampoo and co-wash so we're going to be looking at seven different shampoos most specifically for natural hair gelies also going to be looking at examples of this shampoo and i'll also be pointing out the ingredients in this shampoo that makes it what it is for your hair so one of the key ingredients in shampoos that gave it this cleansing ability is called surfactant now there are two different types of surfactants in shampoos now we have the harsh slash synthetic surfactant and we have the mild slash natural surfactant i'll be leaving example of the harsh slash synthetic surfactant i can't pronounce them i'll also be leaving example of the mild slash natural surfactant on the screen so the first thing we're going to look at is moisturizing shampoo so this type of shampoos are designed to cleanse your hair without stripping them they are formulated with mild surfactant so one thing i want you to note is that moisturizing shampoos most times are they are usually interchanged with hydrating shampoos now moisturizing shampoos are not the same with hydrating shampoos in as much as they have similarities but they are different so moisturizing shampoo help in locking in moisture into our hair reduce dryness of our hair and improve the overall texture and softness of our hair so one of the things you should note that most times we differentiate a moisturizing shampoo from a hydrating shampoo is that moisturizing shampoos contain more emollient and occlusive ingredients and humectants emollients are oils butters 
that help in softening the hair. Occlusive ingredients are ingredients that help in trapping in moisture, like occlusive, they occlude, they occlude the hair cuticles so that moisture is not released out of the hair. So they trap in moisture. So that's why it is called moisturizing shampoo because they help to trap moisture into the hair. So moisturizing shampoos also contain humectant, but most times in most moisturizing shampoo, they are less humectant compared to emollient and occlusive ingredients. So for emollient, you should note you're going to see in moisturizing shampoos are uh, oils, butters, like your shea butter, mango butter, cocoa butter, fatty alcohols, um, squalene, ceramide. Why for occlusive ingredients? You have your bee wax, you have your mineral oils, and you have your paraffin. So the humectant you're going to see is honey, glycerin, aloe vera, hyaluronic acid, propanglycol, and panthenol. So these are the humectants to watch out for in moisturizing shampoos. So these moisturizing shampoos can be used weekly and even daily because they don't strip your hair from its natural oil and they don't cause dryness to your hair. So for the hair type that is going to benefit from moisturizing shampoo is the high porosity hair gelies. High porosity hair gelies are going to benefit from moisturizing shampoo compared to the low porosity hair gelies. High porosity hair gelies, your cuticles are open. So you need something that will seal in your cuticle and make sure that the moisture is retained in your hair. Why for low porosity hair gelies? Your, your cuticle is already sealed. So you don't need a moisturizing shampoo to seal and seal more of the cuticle, which will prevent penetration of hydrating products into your hair. Another hair type would benefit from moisturizing shampoo is the dry scalp gel. So people who have dry scalp are going to benefit from using moisturizing shampoo because your scalp is already dry. So you need something that will moisturize it, make it soothing. So, but if you have oily scalp, you should avoid moisturizing shampoo. So let's look at Shea Moisture Moisture Retention Shampoo. So from the ingredient list, you can see it contains the natural surfactant, which is the glucoside. Then you can see the Shea Butters. You can see aloe vera juice, which is the humectant. You can see panthenol. You can see avocado oil. So this is a moisturizing shampoo. As you can see, it doesn't contain the artificial surfactant. It contains the mild slash natural surfactant. So the next shampoo is the Hair Wonder Natural Shampoo. This is a Nigerian brand. This contains argan oil, honey, which is a humectant, aloe vera, which is a humectant, contains coconut oil, olive oil, castor oil, contains glycerin, which is also a humectant. Why the oils are emollient, right? So, so one striking thing about this product is that it contains a natural um, surfactant, which is called African soup nut. Now, this type of um, surfactant are found like they are herb, they are herbal. They are not like artificial. They are not man-made. They are not lab-made. They are not synthetic. And that's the word. They are not synthetic. This is a natural soapy nut, like this nut ladder so this is what this product contains this is a moisturizing shampoo so the next shampoo is the cream of nature argan oil sulfate free shampoo and let's look at what this shampoo contains contains a mild surfactant which is the sodium c14 616 whatever then the cocoa boy i can't pronounce that thing then you can see it contains canel oil contains panthenol and glycerin so it contains a humectant and it contains an oil so this is a moisturizing shampoo you so the next product is the Beautiful You Miracle Shampoo. This is another Nigerian brand. Let's look at the ingredient list. Here in the ingredient list, you can see glycerin, you can see castor oil. This doesn't have the synthetic and um, surfactant. So this is a moisturizing shampoo. So from this, my findings, I only found out that in Nigeria, or oh, like they are just too affordable moisturizing shampoo from like with my own findings. So maybe there are some, but these are the two popular moisturizing shampoo you can get here in Nigeria because most of our shampoos are clarifying. They contain a lot of harsh surfactants. So the next shampoo we're going to be looking at is hydrating shampoo. So this shampoo are designed to cleanse your hair without stripping the, your hair from its natural oil. And they are formulated with mild surfactant. So 
both moisturizing and hydrating shampoo are also known as sulfate free shampoo because they are formulated with mild surfactant the difference between hydrating shampoo from moisturizing shampoo is that hydrating shampoo contain more of humectant than emollient and occlusive ingredients since hydrating shampoo is mostly formulated with more humectant this humectant help to draw in water draw in moisture into the hair strand this moisture will improve elasticity of the hair example of this humectant hyaluronic acid your glycerin, your honey, your aloe vera, your propanglycol, your pantenols. These are the humectants you should be watching out for in hydrating shampoo. Hydrating shampoo can be used weekly or daily without the shampoo stripping out all the moisture from your hair. Now, this shampoo is good for low porosity girlies and even high porosity girlies. Are going to benefit from it one because as a high porosity girlie you need moisture moisture is what you cannot retain because your cuticles are open but you benefit more from moisturizing shampoo because they are going to occlude your cuticle but even if you're even hydrating shampoo you're also going to benefit from it because it's going to still draw in moisture into your hair so both moisturizing and hydrating shampoo can be beneficial and will be beneficial to high porosity gelly but low porosity gelly will benefit more from using a hydrating shampoo now if you have dry hair if you have dry scalp this hydrating shampoo you're going to benefit from it but if you have oily scalp please avoid hydrating shampoo so let's look at the share moisture low porosity weightless hydrating shampoo so from the ingredient list you can see it contains glycerin which is a humectant contains pantenol which is a humectant you can also see that it contains cocoa whatever i can't pronounce that mild surfactant right you can also see that it contains sodium laurel something which is also a mild surfactant you can see the emollients which are the shea butter grapeseed oil and tea tree oil so this is the hydrating shampoo and like I said, hydrating shampoos are best for low porosity hair. And you can also see from the packaging, it also said low porosity weightless hydrating shampoo. So if you have a low porosity hair, rather than getting a moisturizing shampoo, please stick to hydrating shampoo. So the next shampoo we're going to be looking at is clarifying shampoo. You know, we all love the gels, the heavy butters, the hair wax, edge controls all those things that just make your hair look sleek moisturizing slash hydrating shampoo cannot take out those gels wax edge controls heavy butters from your hair so the only shampoo that can take out these heavy products from your hair is clarifying shampoo clarifying shampoo these are products designed to remove heavy product build up like your silicones like your waxes like your heavy conditioners from your scalp and your hair so now the main ingredient responsible in this clarifying shampoo that can take out this heavy product build up is the harsh slash synthetic surfactant this synthetic surfactant help to strip out your hair and they offer a very very deep cleansing of your hair so i bring it to you that clarifying shampoos are not sulfur free they are sulfur shampoos another thing i want you to note is that these shampoos cannot be used every single day you can't use clarifying shampoos every day because they are going to dry out your hair they are going to strip your hair from its natural oil and they are going to increase skin sensitivity of your scalp so this shampoo is meant to be used once in a month or you, you can use it when you know you have a lot of product build up when you know you've used a lot of heavy butters heavy conditioner hair wax gels on your hair now this is when you can use 
a clarifying shampoo so my advice and what i usually do when using a clarifying shampoo is that i only go once with a clarifying shampoo so i go in first with a clarifying shampoo to take out all the products build up from my hair max is that i go in twice if my hair is so dirty first cleanse with a clarifying shampoo i do the second clean that's if my hair is too dirty i do the second cleanse with a clarifying shampoo then i go in with a moisturizing or hydrating shampoo to bring back the moisture into my hair or if let's say you don't have a moisturizing shampoo another thing you need to do is you have to pre-pull you have to pre-pull first before washing your hair with a clarifying shampoo now what people does is that people is before shampooing that's why it's called pre-pool people brings in moisture into your hair so you could use your living conditioners for pre-pool you could use oil treatment for pre-pool you could also use flaccid gel you could use okra gel these are things that will bring back moisture into your hair first in as much as the clarifying shampoo is going to strip your hair but it won't strip your hair as someone that did not do pre at all i personally i will do pre i'll use clarifying shampoo and i'll still use a moisturizing shampoo all hair types need a clarifying shampoo especially if you're somebody that loves using heavy product on your hair so the only thing now is that you should never use clarifying shampoo regularly you should use them once a month or when you know that your hair needs deep cleansing then you can use a clarifying shampoo if you have color or you have dye on your hair this shampoo will strip out the colors and dyes on your hair so you need to be careful if your if your hair is color treated when using a clarifying shampoo it's also funny how most of all the shampoos in this country called nigeria is clarifying shampoo and one thing about clarifying shampoo is that apart from drying out your hair and making your hair strip out the natural oil is that it makes your hair brittle it makes your hair weak once your hair is dry it's going to be weak so using clarifying shampoo often can lead to excessive breakage of your hair that's why most times in this country if you don't know these things you're going to, your hair is just going to be pulling out you will not understand what's going on so let's look at the vo5 clarifying shampoo so from the ingredient list we can see that this contains harsh surfactants like the sodium laurel sulfate the sodium laurel sulfate and it also contains the cocoa which is the um the mouth surfactant so it has two harsh surfactants synthetic surfactants and then the mouth surfactant so this is a clarifying shampoo. You can also see other ingredients like glycerin, pantenol, and propan glycol. These are humectants you can see in this shampoo. But this shampoo is a clarifying shampoo. So the next shampoo we're going to look at is this toxifying shampoo. Toxifying shampoo are always interchanged with clarifying shampoo. But they are not the same thing the toxifying shampoos are designed and formulated to remove impurities from your hair and excessive oil from your scalp what clay max does on your face to detoxify to remove excessive oil from your skin is what the toxifying shampoo does for your hair so they take out excessive oils and impurities from your hair and scalp and milder a little bit gentle than clarifying shampoos and one thing that differentiates clarifying shampoos from detoxifying shampoo is that detoxifying shampoos contain mild and natural ingredients ingredients that makes up a detoxifying shampoo is black soap apple cider vinegar activated charcoal tea tree oil bentonite clay and caroline clay so if you see these ingredients in your shampoos you are dealing with a detoxifying shampoo so what this shampoo does is that they help to take out excessive oil and sebum from your scalp and hair now this shampoo can be used one to two times a week they are not as drying and stripping as a clarifying shampoo very very suitable for people with oily scalp and oily hair have 
dry hair and dry scalp please this detoxifying shampoo is not for you so let's look at the ogx purifying charcoal detox shampoo from the ingredient list we can see that this shampoo contains mild surfactant the sodium c14 to c16 the cocoa these are the mild surfactant now you can see the detoxifying agent which is the charcoal powder and the chylonine clay are the detoxifying agents in this shampoo so this is a detoxifying shampoo the next shampoo we're going to be looking at is the strengthening shampoo so strengthening shampoos are shampoos that are designed to strengthen your hair prevent hair breakage rebuild your hair protect your hair strands and repair damaged hair so i want you to note that a strengthening shampoo could be sulfate free or could contain sulfates so it depends on the surfactant used in that strengthening shampoo. So that is, you could see a mild surfactant with ingredients that makes up a strengthening shampoo. And you could see a harsh surfactant with ingredients that make up a strengthening shampoo. So that makes it sulfate-free strengthening shampoo, sulfate strengthening shampoo. So just take note. Now the key ingredient that makes a shampoo a strengthening shampoo are hair protein example of these ingredients are biotin hydrolyzed protein so hydrolyzed keratin protein hydrolyzed collagen hydrolyzed soya protein hydrolyzed wheat protein these are the proteins in a shampoo that you say this is a strengthening shampoo another thing to look out for is share bay green tea extra nectar leaf and sea cape these ingredients are what when you see them in a shampoo makes the shampoo a strengthening shampoo so these shampoos are suitable for thin hair damaged hair color treated hair relaxed hair chemical treated hair high porosity hair but not all the time and any hair that needs strengthening whether low porosity if your hair needs strengthening you go for a strengthening shampoo you have to be very careful when using a strengthening shampoo this shampoo can't be used daily or monthly strengthening shampoo should be used once in two three four months depending on if your hair needs it and i break the news to you again that some of the most popular shampoos in this country are also strengthening shampoos and one of the things strengthening shampoos do to the hair is that it increases excessive protein load in your hair and when there's excessive protein content in your hair your hair is going to be brittle your hair is going to break excessively so treat strengthening shampoos with caution so let's look at the mega growth stimulating shampoo from the ingredient list you can see that this shampoo is a strengthening shampoo it contains hydrolyzed wheat protein, contains hydrolyzed soya protein. You can see it contains hydrolyzed oat protein. It also contains hydrolyzed vegetable protein. So it has four proteins in this product. You can also see that it contains harsh surfactant, which is the sodium laureate sulfate. This shampoo is, is a sulfate strengthening shampoo. Like I said in the video, you have to be very careful when using a strengthening shampoo. Especially this particular product that contains four different proteins in one product. Please don't joke with this product. Next shampoo is the Extra Strength, Extra Volume Biotin and Collagen Shampoo from OGX. So from the ingredients, you can see that this is a sulfur-free strengthening shampoo. It contains biotin. It contains hydrolyzed collagen. It contains hydrolyzed wheat protein. It contains mild surfactant like the sodium C14, C16. It also contains the cocoa, blah, blah, blah. So it contains mouth surfactant. So this is a sulfur-free strengthening shampoo. So the next shampoo is chelating shampoo. Now these type of shampoos are designed to remove mineral build up from your hair. This mineral build up comes from hard water. Minerals like zinc, calcium, magnesium, chlorine, lead, iron, these are minerals in water that causes hard water when you use hard water in washing your hair or even spraying on your hair these 
minerals in this hard water bind to your hair so some people confuse chelating shampoo with clarifying shampoo they are not the same thing clarifying shampoos take out product build up chelating shampoos take out mineral build up from your hair so i want you to note that your clarifying shampoos cannot take out this mineral because the bond between this mineral and your hair is stronger than the bond between product build up and your hair the only shampoo that can take out mineral build up is a chelating shampoo so the ingredients when you see in a shampoo you will know that this is a chelating shampoo is edta sometimes you can just see only edta sometimes it can come with disodium edta it can come with trisodium edta it can come with tetrasodium edta it can also come with h edta potassium citrates sodium citrates sodium oxalate citric acid ascorbic acid ingredients that also shows that a shampoo is a chelating shampoo so the reason why you need to take out this mineral build up from your hair is because over time when there is excessive mineral build up on your hair your hair can start behaving like a low porosity hair mineral build up tend to block your cuticles so they tend to occlude your cuticles and what happens when your cuticles are occluded is that your hair cannot take in moisture i also want you to note that these chelating shampoos can also be drying to your hair because they take out mineral build up so they strip your hair from some setting moisture on your hair advice to use for you to save cost is to look for shampoos that are both clarifying and chelating because both clarifying and chelating shampoos should be used once in a month so that if you're using if you're clarifying your hair you know that okay i'm clarifying my hair from product build up and also this shampoo contains chelating ingredients and also i'm also clarifying my hair for mineral build up so the day you're clarifying your hair you're both going to be clarifying your hair for product build up and for mineral build up so look at the dressing me clean and clear replenish shampoo so from the ingredient list you can see that this shampoo is a clarifying shampoo it contains sodium laurel sulfate it contains sodium c12 three blah 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 it contains the shower contains hash surfactant also one of the things i want you to note which are in green marker is that it contains citric acid it contains disodium edta and it also contains ascorbic acid so you can see that this shampoo is both a clarifying shampoo and a chelating shampoo so these are the ingredients you will see and you know that this is a chelating shampoo so the next shampoo we're going to be looking at is cold wash so the full meaning of co-wash is also known as conditioning wash. This basically is just using a conditioner to wash your hair. Co-wash is important for people that love to wash their hair on a daily, that love to wash their hair after each section of their workout, they want to wash their hair. Co-wash is also for people who can tolerate gentle cleansers, like maybe the moisturizing or hydrating cleansers like children babies people with sensitive scalp co-wash is good for those type of people co-wash will wash your hair and also not make your hair dry and also not strip your hair from its moisture it is very very gentle way of washing your hair if you are someone who loves using co-wash please make sure to make room for using your clarifying or chelating shampoos once in a while this is because co-wash cannot take out product build up cannot take out mineral build up so you need a clarifying shampoo you need a chelating shampoo to do the deep cleaning and take out product build up and mineral build up from your hair so let's look at the as i am classic coconut co-wash so from the ingredient list you can see that this is a conditioner this doesn't contain any surfactant you can see that it contains acetyl alcohol acetyl alcohol it contains your emollients like your castor oil coconut oil it contains humectants like glycerin 
and propane glycol so this is a cold wash you can see that cold washes does not contain any surfactant and also remember when you're using them that once in a while you need to use clarifying and chelating shampoo to take out product buildup that may result from continuous using of co-wash on your hair so this comes to the conclusion of this video if you found this video very helpful please don't forget to give me a thumbs up please subscribe please hit the notification bell to know when next i post my next video if you have any question if you have any contribution concerning this video please don't forget to leave it in the comment section i'll be there to answer all your question thank you so much for watching and i love you so much and i will see you in my next one bye Room 2110, I knocked on the door at the penthouse suite Cause I needed more from you